I'm Caitlin Gomez here at the GBTA Broadcast Studio coming to you live from San Diego, California. And I'm really excited about this one because I get to interview my friend Ethan Bernstein. <laughs> He's the CEO and co-founder of the new innovative company called Freebird. We're not that new. You're still new-ish. Some new people have been at GBTA for 30 years, my friend. That's true. I'm, I'm <laughs> one tenth of the way there. This is my third year, so. You're in the toddler phase That's now. right. That's right. <laughs> Speaking of that, like, how did you get started in the travel industry? Like, how does one go from Harvard to say, ah, you know what, I'm going to drop out and be travel? Well, little known fact, before I started Freebird, before business school, I worked at Expedia. So I was actually really? in their That's corporate right. development group. Mm -hmm. My small little team, we reported up to Dara Khazar Shahi, who, you know, everybody in this industry knows really yes. well. but. Now the broader world knows his name, knows how to pronounce it. We used to call him DK. Um, so, you know, I cut my teeth at Expedia doing a bunch of really cool work. Uh, you know, obviously we're buying and selling companies globally, but we were also doing a lot of strategy work as well. So mm -hmm. when I went to business school, I had no idea I was going to stay in travel, but, you know, the siren called me back in again. Well, you found your gap, right? You found where there was really a missing piece to the puzzle, and I think that's... Freebird has been a great kind of filler in that space of, you know, disruption and just protection when it comes to the flights, right? Yeah, it's wild that nothing has been created to solve this problem before. The world was waiting for you, Ethan. You know, <laughs> my, mother, my mother tells me the same thing. Uh, yeah, but it, it's just wild, you know, in our, in our moment of need when stress levels go through the roof and everybody's trying to do the same thing at once. Why wasn't there a technology solution for this? Mm -hmm. One that infuses you know, the efficiency of uh, all the things that we come to expect from our phones mm -hmm. alongside human support to make sure that you know, somebody's there to, to help you through this uh, complicated situation. Mm -hmm. That's what we're building and the reception that we've gotten so far has been incredible. And so most travelers encounter flight disruptions, right? It's just gonna happen. So, and multiple times a year, right? It's That's not right. just going to be one and done. So what are some best practices that you would suggest to avoid these circumstances? Yeah, well, something that we say obviously is they're inevitable. Yeah. So, you know, some of them you can predict by monitoring the weather and knowing the airport you're traveling out of. Mm -hmm. Some things people don't realize is weather around your location also impact flight disruptions as well. So. Mm -hmm. Where is your airplane coming from mm -hmm. and where is it traveling through? Mm -hmm. What's going on at 30,000 feet? These yeah. are things that most people don't think to monitor mm -hmm. and they may not even have the resources to monitor. Mm -hmm. So what we recommend obviously is that they make sure they have tools and resources so that somebody's doing that monitoring for them. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things that we provide. Yeah, like I, I, it's become my mantra that like before a really big meeting, I will take the first flight out of LaGuardia because otherwise there's no guarantee, yeah, right? <laughs> that's exactly right. And you know, you talk to a road warrior, they know all the little all strategies, the tricks, right? <laughs> all the tricks of the trade, but they also know that when things get bad, they've got they got to pull the ripcord. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. Right, but that doesn't have to be the case. Mm -hmm. And if they have the right tools, the right resources at their disposal there is a better way to deal with these moments. Um, yeah. Some of our best testimonials are from people that have been road warriors for 20 plus years or diamond, platinum, whatever yeah. status level, and they don't realize that there are other ways to get through these really traumatic events. And real quick, just how big of an impact can predictive data science really have on the managed travel industry? Yeah. I mean, it's a $60 billion a year pain point. Mm -hmm. A lot of that is just the inefficiency of dealing with a problem in a reactive manner. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to deal with it more proactively, there's obviously a lot of efficiencies that come from it. But what we found is actually some of that stuff is really in the experience that people are going through. If your most valuable salesperson is stressed out yeah. and standing in line instead of getting work done or getting a bite to eat. Crying their colleagues yeah. when they miss their flight. <laughs> that is exactly right. All of a sudden, these are the most productive, important people at companies yeah. not doing the work that they need to do, getting to their meetings, getting home to their families. That impact is so enormous yes. that you know, we should be thinking about it more holistically. I think a lot of people throw around the word experience. Yeah. It's a little bit of a buzzword right now. Yeah. But really what it means is we deal with these situations in very emotional ways. It doesn't matter how steel-faced you are. Yeah. So how can we make these better for, for important employees? Great point, because this is such a personal industry and we need, we need to never forget that, mm -hmm. right? 
Well, Ethan, thank you so much for stopping by. It's always a pleasure. Caitlin, pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in. This is Caitlin Gomez. I will see you next time in the GBTA broadcast studio.